Before we look through the new sections of this analysis, let's actually hide them and look at what hasn't changed. Again, we're given a fixed effects test table. That is, for every fixed effect we have in the model, and we only have one in this case, we're given the source, the numerator and denominator degrees of freedom, the F ratio, and the P value. So this can be interpreted just like before. In this case, we have evidence that in the population, the wines are differing in their average ratings. So P equals 0 0.0419, so just barely below our 0.05 cutoff. Also, just like before, we have an effect details section. Here, we have the fixed effect of wine listed first, and under the red triangle, we have some familiar options. I would turn on the least squares means plot first as a way to look at the effect we're actually dealing with. So we've rejected the null, which is really saying that, on average, we don't think these wines have the same rating in the population. Now also, under that red triangle, we have the familiar options of the LS means contrast, if we want to compare specific levels to each other, and we have the LS means students T and Tukey HSD if we want to make all pairwise comparisons. Just like before, the Tukey HSD will correct our overall alpha for the number of comparisons we're making, and the students T will list off all pairwise comparisons, but without any correction. So really, going forward, you can analyze these models and interpret them in exactly the same way. Nothing has changed with respect to how you'll actually follow up on the analysis once you've produced it. The only thing that changed was how we produced the analysis by marking that judge effect as random. Now let's look at what did change. Let me hide the wine section, and notice we also have a section here for judge. We actually have a table here. This shows the least squares means for each judge, literally just the average across their four wine ratings. We can also get a plot for the judges. If we're actually interested in whether judges differ in terms of their ratings, that is, we want to find which judge rated the lowest on average and go yell at him or something like that, you can of course produce a plot. Now, this won't be expanded by default. You probably saw that the judge section was hidden and wine was shown by default. And that's because most of the time, our random effects are simply there as part of our estimation. That is, we measure different judges because we needed ratings on wines. We're not really interested in looking at these particular judges and who differed from whom. So that is a change here. We actually will have a section for our judge, and later on, we'll have multiple sections for judges and interactions with other terms. Now we'll get to that later. But for now, notice that our interpretation and the way we process the data after we fit the model really follows in the same way. Our main inferences are going to be about our fixed factors, so those are all presented first. Now I want to hide the effect details section and point out two additional sections that got printed out. The first is that random effect predictions table. Now, our random effect, remember, is judge, and so we actually have parameters associated with each judge. I won't go into too much detail about what a blup is, but it's a best linear unbiased prediction. So it's a type of estimation procedure for a random effect that shrinks it towards the grand mean. Now, it's beyond the scope of our course to talk about those and why those are important, but notice that jump is doing something different for that random effect. But this is a table you'll very rarely have to look at, so I would just leave it hidden. Now, the last new table is the Remmel Variance Component Estimates. Now these are interesting insofar as they tell us how much variability is due to the judge differences. Notice we have a section here for judge, one of our random effects. Now look at the variance component. This is really the variance associated or the differences on average associated with judge. There's actually considerable differences from judge to judge in our data set. They account for 51% about of the total variability in Y. Remember, we're always trying to explain total variability. In this case, it's the differences in the ratings. So what this is really saying is 51% or so of the variability in these overall ratings is due just to differences among judges on average. Now that's a considerable amount of variability, and it should give you, again, some insight into why a repeated measures analysis is great. We've been able to remove, statistically, about 51% of the variability in our response by bringing judges into the model, by explicitly modeling where a judge's start point is, independent of the ratings they've given on wine. So that's what this Remmel Variance Component Estimates is really referring to, the different random effects and the amount of variability they're soaking up or explaining in the response variable. But again, this isn't typically a section you'll need to expand, so I would actually keep it closed as well. What you're really looking for when you're doing this repeated measures analysis will be that main effect of your fixed factor and, as we move forward, interactions between your fixed factors.